adventure car. Look at this letter! Woo! We got another one today, Corbin. Wait, you're Charlie. <laughs> Cor there's Corbin hiding in the corner. You guys should have seen it. So, I went out there to go check the mail because me and Corbin were sitting here on the couch. We were just chilling. We watched the mailman drive up. We watched him put a letter in the mailbox and drive away. So, let's see what it is. This time. Okay, that's all right. Oh, this is from Nigel P. Silver. From the desk of Nigel P. Silver. Dear Corbin, allow me to introduce myself properly. My name is Nigel P. Silver, editor of the renowned publication Shirk and Pirate Quarterly. I have lived here a long time, and I know a thing or two about what goes on in these parts. And believe me, I speak from experience when I say that things around here can get complicated. One day last week, I was going about my business laying out type for the latest edition of Shark and Pirate when Flora Smart interrupted my work. This was odd as Flora Smart rarely leaves her cottage. Also, great grandfather Boggy Body, Bottom Beach. Now I can tell you, according to the stories of my own great 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 grandfather, who was an excellent old city captain, Boggy Bottom Rich Paul was a terrific pirate. Fearless and fortunate in the extreme. But Flora was never much interested in local history. She asked me if I knew to, how to find you, which was also odd. Flora does not like people and is not inclined to look for them. I had several questions of my own for Flora. In response, she showed me the note and the keys she found in her kitchen wall. I advised her to send them to you. I also advised her not to show them to anyone else or discuss details of what she found. Folks around here can be extremely excitable when it comes to buried treasure. You may be interested to know that Flora Smart has a connection to a treasure of her own. In fact, she may have a buttload of booty buried on her property. Her buttload nephew, of booty? Uh-huh. That's like Why would a you lot have of... a buttload of booty? <laughs> <laughs> a buttload. <laughs> I, think, I think they mean treasure, a lot of I know, treasure. I know, it was a joke. Uh. <laughs> Buttload. A buttload of booty. <laughs> buttload of booty. Her nephew, Levi Sauer, has been looking for it for years. I have enclosed a percept of a journal we published in issue 148 of Shrek and Pirate Quarterly back in 1735. It was written by a wily old pirate by the name of Oliver Labus the Buzzard. Levisour. The treasure he refers to is not is the same one presumed hidden on Flora's, Flora Smart's property. I'm not sure how this treasure is connected to your treasure, but I'm sure you will agree it's curious that you know that the note was found in her cottage wall. If my own great grandfathers are to be believed, be believed, your great 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 grandfather said plenty of treasure in of his own. Some of it was likely Labuse's. If I were you, I'd be packing your compass and your boat clock, your cutlass and your two brace of pistol, your two brace of pistol, and set out a treasure hunting. I can fit you out with a crew in a ship, if you like, even show you how to sail her. I know these islands like the back of me hands, and there's one thing everyone around here knows. Nothing gets past Nigel P. Silver. <coughs> Yours truly, Nigel P. Silver. P.S. Perhaps you are wondering where Body of Bada Boggy Bottom Beach got his name. Like the privateer Captain Kidd, Boggy Bottom set out on the high seas in a ship that was built with such haste that the seams between the planks began to separate, requiring men to pump water from the ship 24 hours a day. On one occasion, the crew was laid low with fever and the pumps were shorthanded. The bread room filled with seawater and spoiled the biscuit. Thus the ornery and hungry crew dubbed their, 
dubbed their captain Boggy Bottom or Boggy Biscuit. Sooner or later, the ship did sink, and even though Boggy Bottom never again sailed a leaky vessel, the name stuck fast as a barnacle. This is a ship. I know it. Oh, yeah, there's another one. Oh, and this is the journal excerpt. Proves treasure real, but no light shed upon where you can find it. Okay guys, here's the thing. So we just read this um, journal, what is this, journal excerpt that was printed. It looks like um, it's just kind of an interesting story about a pirate uh, finding some treasure. If you want to read it yourself, you can, I guess, pause the video and read it. It's kind of a fun story about finding a whole bunch of treasure on a pirate ship. But uh, what we're trying to solve now is this, it looks like there's a kind of a coded message on the bottom of this letter from Nigel P. Silver. And I know what it is. It's a Caesar shift. Okay. A shift seven would look like this. A equals H, B equals I, C equals J, D equals K, you get this. So you just take double alphabet and you shift one seven letters to the right, say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or seven sh letters to the left. Yeah. Um, and so, we need to write try your hand steps. at this shift three, maybe. Should we try to solve this shift three? Yeah. But then, Corbin's saying that he thinks that this is a Caesar shift. So we are working on doing this Caesar shift cipher. And right here, there's a fun little coded message, and it says, try shift three. So what I did was I wrote, I, they've already got the alphabet here, so what That's we did was shift we seven. shift, this is a shift seven, because it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a shift three, one, two, three. And then it picks up D, E, F all the way down to the end. So that's a shift three on the top. So we're solving it right now. The top word, first word is 20. And so we're gonna go and finish the rest really quick here. So I, uh, we're gonna go up here and say I, so I is F. R, R is O, X, X is U, and U is R, 24. Alright, let's go ahead and solve the rest of this thing quick. Okay, we solved it guys. Check it out, it says 24 across is where to look. 24 across. So over here, we've got 24 across. Where the booty man hid his treasure. Where the booty man hid his treasure. And Meritus. Where, is it, in the, is it in the magazine, Corbin, that it says that? Who was the booty man? So, where the booty man hid his treasure, it says 24 crosses where to look. And the answer is Merit Meritius. Meritius. What's the chat up on? Wait. Was that in the other was that in the letter that we just got? No. It wasn't in here? I don't think it was. Okay. Let's try and do this. Oh yeah. I think that's a shift. Well see. Guys, 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 guess what? Okay, so <laughs> we decided to try the shift site, Caesar shift, with this weird, like, message here on the bottom. We weren't sure how, what the number we should do, seven or three, because it, it comes with a seven built in, but then it says try a shift three. So we were like, okay, let's try the shift, shift three, and we got, HSRX, and we're like, okay, that's not right. So we tried the shift seven, and it says don't. Now, we gotta figure out what the rest of this coded message is. Okay, here we go. The next letter is A, which is T? T, yeah. Why? is R. B. is U. 
Z A S F A S T Don't trust A A S T O H L E Don't trust the U N L E W P O H L E D W Don't trust the nephew the nephew is, um, Flora Smart, I think. No, who's Flora's nephew? Who sent us, he sent us the letter last time. And he told us not to trust Nigel. Remember? Who should we trust? Go get the letter, right? Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. Okay guys, this is really confusing. Because in the last video, we got a letter from Flora's nephew, who worked for the museum. And he said not to tell anything to Nigel and to not trust Nigel. Okay, go ahead. If, what does it say? If anyone asks you any questions, like Nigel, Nigel P. Silver, for instance, please don't tell him anything. <sighs> Nigel P. Silver says don't trust the nephew. And the nephew, what was his name again? The sewer? Levi Sewer says don't trust Nigel P. Silver and to not tell him anything. Corbin, what do we do? I think I have no idea. We told the nephew everything on that phone call. And Nigel P. Silver just said not to trust the nephew. But the nephew said not to tell Nigel P. Silver anything. He hasn't asked us for anything. I think I should be nephew kind of is a little bit suspicious because he says, please don't tell him anything. And he's like, don't trust the nephew. So who do you think is more suspicious? I think, I think it's Levi. Yeah. You think I Levi's think suspicious because he's asking nicely? Yes. What do you think? I think Levi is suspicious. I kind of really? want to trust Nigel. You want to trust Nigel? I don't okay. trust Okay, so I'm totally getting the complete opposite vibe because Nigel is like a pirate. And Levi is like a historian who owns a museum, right? Yeah. Where's the letter? No, this. Oh, but please what take is it out. Line? Both of them are <sighs> well, that's so confusing. I mean, who wouldn't want treasure? But then they send us keys, so it's like, I feel like I want to be able to trust them if they're sending us keys and maps and like, Levi is like, He owns the Royal Museum Archives. Should we call him about it? We called him before, but he, he's always on a voicemail. Like, he's not available to talk to. This is so strange, guys. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Who do you think we should trust? Levi or Nigel? Because even we are not sure who's... who's who to trust. I got an idea. What if we, uh, what if their names are, like, switched? Like what but we just did. Three. Yeah. What if we should, uh, like, see what their names spell with the ships? You guys can try that. Let me know if you find anything out. In the meantime, I'm really curious to see if, if we get any other letters or not. Go ahead. Voicemail of Levi Sewer. I may not be able to return your call yeah, for some time. Still not I available. I had a knock on the door this morning and there was nobody at the door. Right when I looked there, there was nobody at the door and then I saw something in our backyard just wandering around. And it was not seen. Okay, seriously, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. 
Um, do you think if we shouldn't trust them that that means that maybe they're gonna try to steal the treasure from us? What if they're, Bandits. if they know where we live and they're sending us mail, maybe they have our address, which means they could be following us. And if we go out to try to find the treasure, they might try to it take it. It might be like Uncharted. 